Good morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show, your Friday edition, where I am thrilled to welcome back our next guest to the set. I have learned so much about him because as much as he's here to tell us about his book and an unlikely success story, his successes are incredulous and include a history of party time right here on <laughs> TTT. This morning, it is an honor and a pleasure to welcome back to the set the Hummingbird Silver Medal recipient and Reverend yeah. Lennox Tusi. As this morning, he wears his author hat and tells us more about his latest book release, An Unlikely Success Story. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome back, as I said. Well, because before the break, you, you dropped that bomb on me, and I'm like, how much more is there in this book? <laughs> Party time. Mm -hmm. Reverend. Mm -hmm. Author, mm -hmm. Teak. And, and in terms of the even the history of where you were from, living in St. James, not even finishing secondary school, this is incredulously a success story. And I need you to walk us through it because there's a lot to unpack. Well, <laughs> um, thank you for having me. And I think, where should I start? Mm. St. James. I was born in St. James. Right. And I lived there for four years with my mother's parents and then I came to a port of Spain in London on the street mm -hmm. and I happened to get got, I lived in a very active neighborhood I say active because it's a neighborhood that had people like in my block alone had Everett Cummins oh, wow. it had Peter Minchell it had Burtonis it had Anne Marie Innes. You know, it's a very, very active... Good uh, active. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> Very yeah. good active. Mm -hmm. There was a lot happening in there. And uh, I went to Richmond Street Boys School, one of the best <laughs> boys schools in the world. Uh, all right. Yeah, so they say. Yeah, it's, it's just real. <laughs> uh, that time you had very disciplined teachers, you know, yeah. cut your cards straight or pay the price. <laughs> you know? Fair, fair, fair. I mean, um, to be at Richmond Street, they could send you up one block to the Blind Institute to get some whips. Oh, boy. <laughs> And then people will be very mad at you. You're going for whip for the teacher to be three. Mm. But it went with the territory. I um, felt that not only I, but the teachers felt that I was a good prospect to get into St. Mary's College. Right. So I actually built my hoops around that. Right. You know, next step from here. St. Mary's. It didn't happen that way because that's not the way God planned it. Hmm. You know, disappointment. Yes, very much so. I went back to St. James for a short while with my mother, and then we moved shop to Pierlin in Port of Spain, that's around Piccadilly right. and Prince Street. And that's where you had to think fast and move fast. Mm. There was a lot happening around you, and you had to choose. Do I go left or do I go right? Which way did you go? Right. <laughs> you know, and um, there's a very interesting story here in that... Um, I fell in love with a young lady with my fastness. The lady got <laughs> pregnant. And here was I looking for a job. But I was in City St. Copeta's Steel Orchestra at the time. Right. And I told one of the, elderly, the elders on the street that I, I needed a job urgently. So anything he had or heard about, please inform me. Right. And here I was in the dry river playing football this Friday evening. And this person leans over the wall in the dry river, which is from Piccadilly Street, Street, leaning over. Mm -hmm. And he says, Lennox, come up for 7 o'clock Monday morning. Well, I wasn't asking no questions. I was, this is Friday evening, and I wish I could push Saturday and Sunday all the way to get to Monday <laughs> to morning. To get to Monday. Yeah, and that was the beginning of it. <laughs> Rufus Gulston, may his soul rest in peace. He didn't realize what God was doing. Because I got into Nestle, and I moved from throwing boxes and loading cases in the warehouse to the top of the pile. Hmm. It took some doing, a lot of beating book, a lot of UE after work. It took a lot of work, but am I satisfied? Yes. Am I do it again? Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No differently? No, because um, growing up as a young fellow on London Street, I always admired families, you know, and, and hope that one day I too will have a family. I thought that was also important. And it turned out that God has blessed me with a fantastic family. One son, 
two daughters, dynamic people. <laughs> My son is out in Washington, busy this weekend because he's taking his daughter off to Yale. Right, she got a full scholarship to Yale. So he's taking her there and taking his son to another university out there. While back here in Trinidad, mm -hmm. the two girls and my wife are helping me to get this. We didn't expect the first set to go so quickly, to be quite honest with you. Well, let's talk uh, a little bit about this. I mean, with such an incredulous story, it's mm -hmm. not that surprising, really. You are literally talking about incredible achievements on a national, global, international scale from national yeah. medals to, of course, being supremely employed with a multinational without yeah. secondary school education, yeah. and then yeah. thinking about the process of raising a family and so much more inspiration, I am not at all surprised that they're flying mm. off the shelves. Yep. So how do we get our hands on a book at least next week since they're out of stock right now locally, yes? Uh, <laughs> right now, there may be a copy or two left at Living Water or um, Book Specialist. Okay. Might be that as far as we got in distributing. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? Because a lot of them went out of the country. I mean, family heard about it outside and they say, well, listen, Harry coming up, send six by him now. Hmm. You know? Not one or two, six. You no, know, serious. <laughs> one cousin took 10, ten copies they must to send up there. Rightfully proud. We got money yesterday from another cousin for another four. Hmm. And that's the kind of movement that's happening. And that's interesting because you would think family members know firsthand the story. No, well, there are lots of pieces that they miss because a mm. lot has happened inside little pockets of my life. I spent close to 30 years with Spectacular, Calypso Spectacular, you know, producing that Calypso 10 nightly. Right. You know, um, I, I went to Camsel, mm -hmm. which you will know as Catholic News, I was, the, I was the CEO there for, for, for another three and a half right. years, you know, and then I went to Radio Vision, Power 102 and 94, Boom Champions, mm. spent another three and a half years there. Iconic. You know, so... So they're, they're catching up, technically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, so they, they, would have, they may have heard about it, but they're now getting some more Insight. information. Mm. I'd like to thank two people on this. One is Errol Pilgrim, deceased, the late Errol Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. Errol was the one who kept pushing me, and he used to say, PPP, PPP, put your point in print. Put your point in, in print. print. Okay, yeah. I like I, that. I, I said, we'll do that one day, we'll do that one day. And I finally made up my mind, I said, Errol, I think we should settle down and do this. He said, all right, after Carnival, we'll start talking, I bring my recorder. And after Carnival, which Carnival? How many years or how that long? a couple of years now. Errol didn't live to see it. Mm. So... Talking with Tony Fraser after that, um, thought we should pick up the slack and make it happen. Now, I want to say that this is really not about me and my success story. But this was really put together to inspire young men. Too many young men outside there give up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen the way they thought it should or the way they planned it. And that's the end of the world. No, it isn't. God has a special plan for you. One that you don't really know about, you know. Um, and it's important that young people, the gun is not the answer. I mean, that's a very strong statement to me, but I swear by it. The gun is not the answer. God didn't make you for that. Mm. So it's up to you to find what did God make me for? The best mechanic on the block? The best painter? The best poet? What did God make me for? There's a reason God don't waste time. Mm. And let me not waste time in making sure that people find out where they can find this book and how much it costs, because uh, I know more copies are going to fly off the shelf. The, the soft cover version is 250 and the hard, hard cover, cover like okay. this, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, 325. All right. And um, for information, if they move around and, and don't get it, they could call 683 mm -hmm. 8752. In that case, I take the opportunity to thank you, not just for taking the time to be here with us this morning, not just for sharing this incredulous story, but for genuinely being an icon who is living and sharing his works with us continuously throughout his life. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO, the deacon, the cultural advocate, and the revolutionary. Lennox Toussaint joined us this morning to tell us more about his unlikely story that you want to add to your book collections, whether you are a young man that he hopes to inspire, yep. or generally anyone who wants to appreciate an icon of the soil. We thank him genuinely, and we ask that you stick around because we've got much more on the Now Morning Show, your Friday edition. So be back after this message.